from Genesis. And the Lord saw the light, and it was good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We find ourselves here in this first Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany, in this extended season of the Nativity cycle, which, unlike in the secular world, where Christmas begins at some point, if candy shelves are to be believed, at some point between Labor Day and the day after Halloween. In our world, in the world of faith, in the world of faith, what has happened? What's happened? What's happened? What's happened? Can you hear me? Yes, excellent. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me. In our world, in the world of faith, this nativity cycle begins on Christmas Eve and extends to the Feast of the Presentation on the 2nd of February. And the greatest feast in the midst of this, which the Orthodox hold as the celebration of Christmas, is the epiphany. It's only since the 19th century and Charles Dickens, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, Coca-Cola and Clement Clark Moore did a lot to make Christmas what it is today. The feast of the epiphany, the 12th night after Christmas day was the feast. It was the feast when light sprang into the world, manifested by the star over the manger, the visit of the wise men from the east, not from the chosen people of God, not from the people of Israel, but from far-flung lands who followed the light to the light the one who would be the light of the world. For the Lord saw the light and saw that it was good. This first Sunday after the Epiphany is often referred to as the Feast of the Baptism of our Lord because it is the baptism of Christ in which 30 years later, he was manifested in his fullness and began his earthly ministry. We will note this again at the beginning of Lent when he leaves John's baptism and goes into the wilderness. But this is the beginning. This is when, having been manifest to the wise men as an infant, Rising out of the waters of baptism, he's manifested to the chosen people when the sound comes out of the cloud and the spirit descends upon him as if a dove and says, this is my beloved son. Or rather in Mark's version, thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased, which makes no doubt as to whom the voice was speaking. For so long in the church, we have drawn distinctions between good and bad, light and dark, sin and salvation. God doesn't make these distinctions. We do. God doesn't damn us. We do. 
God looks at us as he does the light and sees beauty and brightness and innocence and joy and says, as he did in Genesis at the creation of the world on the very first day, this is good. But what do we reflect back to him? That's our part in it. What do we reflect back to him? I invite you to join me in being a joyful Christian, a thankful Christian, one who manifests the joy and thanksgiving of being alive and being saved and being a member of the body of Christ by being grateful and joyful and thankful. This season of the epiphany in which anew the child has been manifested unto us and view your fellow men and women, not in the way that sometimes you view yourself, but in the way that God views you, in the way that he viewed that first light. And it was good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.